Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Trenny and C. I'm Trenny. This is C. Today we have the Glenn Fiddick lineup in front of us, mm -hmm. and we are going to crack into this bad boy. Right well, here. we are into our final bottle this month, uh, our final review of of the Glenn Fiddick. So if you're interested in a review of the 12, 14, 15, or 18, then check out our channel because we've already done those videos. And now we are doing the Glenn Fiddick. XX or 20, 20? and this was um, this was like this is ex Glenfiddich experiment number two, and okay. this was where the master distiller brought in 20 whiskey experts from around the globe, and they all got to choose one cask. Guess and our invite got lost in the mail. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we weren't part of that, so I don't know what was going on there. Uh, so, but. Um, so they came together, they chose the 20 casks of some of, apparently, mm. the most exceptional Glenfiddich in the uh, warehouses. and Presumably uh, the world. Presumably. And married them together, and then you got that. Nice. Of it. Well, let's pop the top. Coming in at 47%. Oh, 47%. So this has a, a higher ABV. Now we get these... Yeah. All forty percent. This is forty three. Yeah. Nice. Um, we did review this like two years ago. Yeah. Because we were gifted a bottle of this at right. one point. Right. But here we are revisiting it. Modernized review. Here we go. Oh, Great one of the pop. best pops of the night. Excellent pop. Kind of um, a double pop. Nice, uh, like, really wet cork there too. You can see. So it's uh, that's, that's very cool. I like the bottle too. It's got the the. I'm not sure what the significance of the the thumbprint is, but uh, kind of cool. Yeah, I like the, cool. it's kind of blacked out. You know, it's like yeah. I kind of like see the liquid though, which is nice. I like that you can see where it's at. There's been a few bottles. I'm just looking on the shelf over here that have done the black and copper kind of thing recently. It's it's a good look. It looks nice. It's a good look. It's a trick. Okay, let's right, get to the point. Let's here we nose go. it up. Here we go. Forty seven percent. It has oh, like a nice. funk to it, even like it's kind of like a sherry funk, in my opinion. Bit of a, a sherry funk, yeah. Like, I, well, so the kind of we've discussed uh, that the house style of Glenfiddich is interesting because they age their their spirits in sherry casks and bourbon mm -hmm. casks, but it never says like finished in or anything. It's like it's just straight up for twelve or yeah. fifteen or whatever, how many years yeah. aged in those casks, and that's kind of like where where it sits like i'm actually getting a bit of a bourbon nose on the on the nose here but it definitely has that like the typical glenfiddich like figgy plum figgy kind plum of a little style. bit of apples this one's actually like a little bit more of like a a red delicious you know mm. one of those apples um but the percentage shines through a little bit more i'm getting yeah. a little bit more of a tingle on my nose buds i feel like also this one could get roughed up and open up a little bit mm. sometimes that For sure. higher percentage is traps those you know those alcohol vapors in there plus it's a no age statement whiskey but it's presumably if these experts were choosing casks you know you're gonna get a little bit yeah. of age in there but exactly and i think you know in a lot there's a debate of uh, the no age statement thing, and I understand the criticism. However, you can have excellent, like, five-year-old whiskeys. Sure. Um, you're just not going to put that on the label if it's the right. youngest thing in the bottle. So, right. and that's probably what happened is one of these one of these people chose something that was a little bit younger, and they were like, yeah. uh, we don't really want to call it Glenfiddich eight-year-old. Yeah, exactly. Whatever, exactly. so. All right, let's, should we taste it? Yeah, let's get to the flavor. Mmm. It's got, this one has a little bit more of that, um, diesel-y, new toy plastic kind of sherry, um, to it, in my opinion. That was kind of like what hits me first off. Plus a nice sweetness, a little tingle. Nice sweetness, but it also has a, like a little bit of a, um, anesthesia, sort of like mm. numbing kind of thing, but it actually like, that has a, a flavor note to it, a little bit of a softer kind of cherry note to it or something to me what's different from the rest of the lineup is that this definitely enters that musty dusty kind of realm like yeah. more so than like the other ones are brighter fruitier like um like in some cases a little bit more citrusy yeah this one's a little bit more musty dusty um 
a little bit more of that like dark the darker sherry notes mm -hmm. as opposed to like the fruitier but the sweetness is punchier just one. right on point again like mm -hmm. that's one thing that um Glenn Fittick has done really really well it's, nailed like, the it's, sweet. The, it's never too too sweet it's never under sweetened um this one yeah it has a bit more of a punch to it uh but whether I, that's the percentage or just the whatever influence they're, they're but mixing together we've always been like i am a fan of like musty dusty scotches though for sure oh totally like, and this is when taking right me, yeah this is taking you to that that realm where it's like it's dark and um and rich and like and mm. musty dusty and uh, like when i say that i mean that like it's got this like i'm finding the musty dusty on the finish more than the upfront mm -hmm. aspect of it it's like, maybe it's even like do it and then it's maybe even uh, got like a bit of a like a maybe a cocoa kind of thing happening there I, I, totally i that's bang on because i was thinking as i just had that sip there that there's something it's not just the fruit vibes and like yeah. the honeys and the kind of like a little bit of citrus it's there is a more of a like a chalky kind of mm -hmm. cocoa thing yeah it's like a cocoa there. powder or yeah. something mm. Mm. Yeah. definitely different from the rest of the lineup like this is like the core range at this point is the 12 14 15 18 and then you get into these experimental like the storm and then there's like a whole Zy bunch of cask one yeah there's, a, like there's a whole bunch of like different ones that they're doing here but um jamie johnson provided us with the uh the double x which is uh very 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 good. Um, I'm enjoying it. Mm. I think also, this is one of those ones that as soon as you open it, it has a little bit of, it needs a little bit of oxygen to get to the bottle to kind of open up those flavors. Yeah. And I'm even now getting a little bit of like, you, we mentioned the, the cocoa and all that, but it actually kind of has a little bit of that slight sea salty soapiness mm. to it too, but mm. not overwhelming. It's just kind of like, it's just a note. It's it's opening up, I guess you could say. A background feature. Um, so yeah, so this will, these will all be featured in our Dram Club. So if you're interested in joining a Dram Club, check us out at patreon.com slash C. And don't forget that this episode is brought to you by Stellar Lumens. Oh, they're huge. The, the cryptocurrency of choice for 2020. Money of the future. M future money. Even though it's 2021. Right. It's the past. Yeah. But then, yeah. It's the future currency anyway. of 2020. <laughs> anyway. You get the point. Just buy it. Buy cryptocurrency. Yeah. All, All right. right. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell a friend.